because she's so busy with her job. Hello there, Stoic. What's this? What are you doing, Kitty? Bebe? Who's Bebe? My name is Brian, a.k.a. your favorite dog. Hey, who's like you got a gargoyle to get a number out of pizza around here? Forget it, Vinny, you're not Brian. Come on, I went through a lot of trouble. For example, I know Brian was rather into politics, so I read the newspaper. What is going on with all these politics, huh? That is about Brian's level of political awareness. Yeah, and you know how Brian wrote Wish It, Want It, Do It? Well, I wrote a book, too. A little something called Wish It, Want It, You Blow. Really? Yep. Let me read your next one. You wish you were a millionaire. You want more money. Guess what? You blow it. You wish you could change the neighborhood. You want to be a select man. You blow it. You wish you could open up a restaurant. You did not want it.
What's up, guys? We're going to get started in one minute. I'm trying to give people a few more minutes to get in here, and then I'm going to get started. All right, what's good, everybody? I've been putting this topic out for almost a week because um, I had to really sit down and figure out how I wanted to put this information. When I'm dealing with certain women, I'm starting to wonder if they really want marriage, if they really want true love, understanding, and I'm going to say stability, companionship, we can go down all the list of things that comes with being with someone and building. But the more I do my research, the more I see that we've got a lot of gold diggers out here. So my topic today on if they want marriage or gold diggers, I have a purpose for that. A lot of women have reduced themselves to not looking for love, which basically, when marriage and stuff started to be created, it wasn't for love anyway. It was economic values, economic stability, in order to keep everything within the people that actually, you know, the two families that came together. So... When I look at a lot of these black women out here, right, and they be talking about marriage, I be I want to know what what they think marriage consists of. And if marriage was 50-50 then, and I'm not talking about love, because we all know a lot of these people didn't get married for love. They were arranged marriage. So if it was 50-50 then, what makes women feel like it shouldn't be 50 50 now or what you know and it's a lot of them that feel that way it's the it, the situation got so bad they feel like the man's supposed to be just 100 and, and it don't make no sense to me let me explain something to you every time one of these particular i i mean um avatars or something come into my chat I'm having them traced. 
when I find out who's making all these phony pages and putting all this shit inside of my chat, you're going to have a problem. Now, I'm going to see if motherfuckers have enough sense to quit making that shit, putting them into my chat. Because I got an idea. I don't know who it is, but I'm just going to file back for a minute until I catch the shit. You don't want me to do that. It is very easy to find when you're making these phony ass pages and shit. And it links back to somebody's email or somebody's information. So I advise y'all to quit fucking with my page with that bullshit. Now let me get back on my topic. My issue with women today is that they don't see eye to eye with men. A lot of women. I'm not saying all of my sisters. But the majority of my sisters, I feel now, want handouts. They want to be able to control. It's a lot of women always talking about femininity and all of this shit. But then when you look at them and you deal with them and the things that they bring to the table, it seems like to me they, they want to be the man and the woman. A lot of these women, they meet men that's real good to them, try to treat them with some respect. But if there's a nerd in the classroom, it's just not appropriate. Oh, maybe he wear glasses. Maybe he's too skinny. Maybe he's this and that. They base everything in their relationships on bullshit instead of the stuff that they should really be standing on. Money, people always worry about. I'm trying to figure out why money is always an issue. Of course, it's something that benefits us. But why is that the primary issue? Majority of these women, swirlers, all of this shit that I've asked these questions and what they want in a man or what do they feel a man's standard should be. The first thing come out their fucking mouth is how much money the man makes. So I'm wondering, is it marriage, gold digging, or prostitution? Or is it all three? Because if a man marries somebody, whose mentality is gold digging. She just said the coochie. So what happened to basing it on how we have kids? What happened to basing it on what we can accomplish together? What happened to basing it on if you got my back, I got your front, or you got my front, I got your back? Death do us part. Love, honor, all of the things that people say when they take marriage vows, but they didn't live up to that shit before they got married. See, today, hold on one minute, y'all. Let me um hit my alert so they can start checking these. Wait, one minute. Let me turn my alert on on my YouTube so they can start finding out where these pages are coming from. I keep jumping up in my chat. Because I'm not trying to deal with that shit today. On oh my knees. And see what's going to happen. I'm just going to start blocking the motherfuckers I think going to. Because I, I don't care about him block all day. If you don't care nothing about seeing your stupid ass up there. And continue to fuck with my chat. I just keep blocking everybody. I don't care. Because I'm tired of all of that bullshit. Now. Hmm. That's always something. Back to what I was saying. Dealing with women who I feel like is out here and gold diggers. I think it's a bunch of bullshit when you're dealing with stuff like that. But this is what a lot of these women bring to the table. Everything is about money now. And it's sad because you would think that, you know what I'm saying, that our people would know by now that it takes two to be able to build. It's going to take two to be able to have something. And majority of these women that call these men dusties and Let's take Sister Noble and Aaliyah, for example, because these are two great examples that I can use. 
sitting up on the panel calling me and dusties and broke ass niggas and all this old crazy shit. And them bitches broke. Them bitches is dusty, shitty, all kind of stuff going on over there. What makes me mad is how can we have women like that trying to judge black men? See, it'd be funny when these women say all this shit. They don't be dusties when you're with them. They just don't be little when you're with them. They everything in the world when you're with them. But as soon as the separation comes, instead of being a woman and standing on your ten, instead of moving forward and building something for yourself, you angry because you the bitch who didn't ever have that for yourself. You the type of person who didn't build nothing for yourself. You the type of person can't live without a man. You don't know how to stand on your team. So the best thing that you can do is sit back and find all type of ways to destroy the man, his character, what he believe in, what he stand for. Y'all just gonna try to tear all of that shit down. Yeah, today, I'm touching on that. See, it ain't my place to talk to me. That's the man's place to deal with them. We got brothers out here who can deal with black men who ain't shit. We talking to the sisters today. I look at people that's in the YouTube streets now. Sister Aaliyah and that bitch Noble, they're a prime example of toxic environments. When you sit somewhere and you listen to shit like Dusty's and being that shit and broke ass nigga. And let me explain something to y'all before you keep going on over there like calculating ass hands. The word nigger doesn't bother me. An emotional, outdated motherfucker who don't know no better, they would still get mad about that word. I don't give a damn about that word. You know why? Because any background of people can be a nigger because it only means ignorance. That's it. So when you got motherfuckers get out in their feelings about words and shit, that tells me also too emotionally where your mindset is, what type of person you is. I don't get mad about shit like that. People can call me whatever they want to. I'm going to smash your ass when I go in on you because your vocabulary ain't big as mine. Because some of these motherfuckers is only limited to dictatorship, dictionaries. I look at a lot of people. I never hear people reference the thesauruses or black law dictionaries to understand the difference between what we are up under. I never hear people talk about shit that's important when it comes to our black people, but we got a thousand motherfucking intellectuals on YouTube. But I sure hear these hoes talking about what a man ain't got. What a man can't provide. But it's a lot of women out here ain't got a damn thing they sell. Like them two bitches. You don't want to keep on shit. But now let me ask, did Aaliyah want to be married or was she a gold digger? Because, bitch, if you couldn't get it right in eight, for eight times, you got married eight fucking times. And each one of the marriages was down to short marriages. It's something wrong with you. It ain't nothing wrong with the black man. You know, I sit over there and listen to y'all talk all that bullshit. I'm still going to get on that tape. But this is the very reason why I did this. And I look at the shit that y'all get that from. This is why I bang on Cynthia G so much. Because that shit toxic as hell. When you got women that's running around agreeing with that fuckery. When they dusties and they mammies and all of this shit they got them. Make that shit make sense. How you gonna be a bum ass bitch? A nothing ass hoe? Stank pussy, shitting on yourself, can't keep your house clean, you work two days a week, you couldn't even put ties on your car, you couldn't keep your car fixed, couldn't maintain, keep you no grocery that you had to eat out, bitch, you can't cook, 
You ain't got no more fucking comments in. No black man will settle down with that. Check your motherfucking self before you be up here talking about the black man. Check your motherfucking self. Women like me who got shit going on for themselves. We ain't know what I'm talking about no black man ain't shit. We ain't know what I'm talking about where the fuck we going through this and that. Let me tell you something. If me and my man separate today, we just separated. Am I going to waste my time acting like a scorned little bitch and sit up and argue about this shit? No. Either it works or it don't. But it's all about what you put into the relationship. I've never seen such following ass women in my life. I see we don't have no true leaders, period. Or even just true teachers, professors, whatever you want to call yourself. I can't even say them hoes on scholarship. Because they follow whatever the fuck they see. They call Cynthia G name. Like she one of they goddamn women or something. And the shit that they be over there on, Cynthia G don't give a fuck about that shit. And this ain't no shot said nobody, but I'm keeping it a stack today. I wonder how many of y'all on YouTube that follow Cynthia G, how many times y'all done met her? How many times have she taken time out to at least address y'all issues? Give y'all some type of assistance. Correspond with her people. Her regulars. Shit like that that's in the chat or support her. I don't even think the sisters that be on the panel together. I don't think none of them not even met each other. But you're pushing this toxic bullshit. Because you got green ass women out here who listen to that shit and donate thousands of dollars to hear it. But 85% is sad that our black women follow this shit because damn near 85% of Cynthia G's chat and them damn divestors and all of this all crazy shit. It'd be a bunch of it'd be a bunch of white women or foreign women. When you really look at them chats and check them names and the information out of them avatars, it don't be that many black women in there. But y'all say they trying to push this shit. It don't make sense to me. And the reason why I say it's gold digging is because if you love a man, if you really love a man, you're going to get with that man. And you all together will figure out how to make shit work, how to make sure you both are taken care of, how to make sure nothing separates y'all. These women want the man to do everything, which would always be conflictual. I ain't met no woman yet who's just gonna sit at home and shake the fuck up. I ain't met none of them. I might be wrong, but I ain't met no women who do that. And as soon as that man ain't got nothing, the first thing he started is to argue. They tell me it's a lot of successful black women. But I wonder what cost did they get there? It's a lot of black women that slept their way all the way to the top. A lot of these so-called conservative women and the ones who act like they don't be doing this and they don't be doing that, they'll be the main ones I have fucking out. And they want this man and they just must do this and check their options and them be the main ones who got whorish backgrounds. Them be the main ones who have demeanors or can't do shit to bring nothing to the table when it comes to a relationship. And I ain't talking about sexual. Cause you don't got that far and you ain't figured out if you even are compatible to this person, then you gotta check yourself. You ain't gotta put no time frame on what you do. Cause I've seen women who waited five years to sleep with a man. And I've seen some of these whole wait five seconds. It just depends on what type of man you find and what you will stand for. If you accept anything, then you absolutely right. You're going to get what you're asking for. But if you're real with yourself, you ain't got to go through that. So I asked everybody, is it marriage? Marriage consists of a lot of things. 
But when you, when I used to put your standards on when it comes to getting a man, is he got to provide. That's the main thing I hear. He need to be able to provide for me and protect me. And, oh, they all act like got that wolves running down the street 24 hours a day. I'm sick of that line. He need to provide and protect me. Well, you got to provide and protect him too. That shit go both ways. You know, I asked the sister, if she say her man getting his ass whooped, going through some changes with her, will she get him off? She said no. That's his problem. Well, if that's his problem, if you getting your ass whooped, that's your problem. Make that shit make sense to me. Your man going through something, you ain't going to be there for him. You going to just go run and hide. But when you get in something, you expect the man to come out the woodwork and put his cape on. How can you ask for something you're not willing to give? My mama taught me that a long time ago. You can't ask for something you ain't willing to give. I'm so sick and tired of black women sitting like the man supposed to just do this. We're going to do this 80 20 rule. Y'all on the 99, 99, 99, and y'all on the 0.1 rule. I'm just going to show up. Look at all this shit. I look at Noble and I look at Ali, and I'm going to keep using these hoes as an example because they're prime. This man that came and did all this shit for both of y'all. What he got out of it? Not a goddamn thing, but his name sounded all over YouTube and y'all hoes cahoosing together. Ignorance. That is the most ignorant thing I've ever seen. I've never seen two exes become best friends and go after the man. I've never seen such psyched out bullshit in my life. And I've never seen when you're the woman, noble. You're the woman that he's with right now. You would contact his ex and deal with his ex and cause problems in your relationship. What ex is going to give you positive information? When you don't took her meal ticket, you took the bitch food stamp card, <laughs> you took the benefits, he took the safe, you took that whole meal ticket. Why would you think for one minute that Aaliyah is a friend to you? That's why I laugh at these hoes. Because you're green. Bitch, you so stuck on trying to have somebody around you, you would accept anything. Because it's funny to me, looking at you out here in the YouTube streets, and even in Atlanta, Georgia, Aaliyah, the only friend you got, a delusional hoe. That's it. I ain't never seen two women do that one there. Team up with the ex and start some shit. Even women who go into court against me and ain't friends, they can be cordial. We can speak because it ain't about this bullshit with this nigga. But hey, we all be here for the check or whatever we are. You know, we ain't, we ain't got to show out like that. So I look at that. How can you have women that get all that type of shit from a man and still complain? He had a job, he would provide. Apparently, you felt comfortable and safe with him. You felt protected. And out of all of that shit, and he claimed you. I will not with your Mr. Ed looking ass what he did. And bitch, you up on here still talking shit. Just for all what he would have did for me as a woman, I would have left her alone. Because everybody go through shit. But you didn't start doing this till you let Aaliyah get in your ear and you get mad when somebody say that. When you contacted Aaliyah, like a weak bitch, questioning her about your man, that's what caused all this shit to get started. I'm a real one. If a woman call me and I'm an ex, I'm going to click the motherfucking phone off. I ain't even got no conversation for you, child. I'm not well. You are. Enjoy your time. Click. 
That was a messy bitch from the start. Ting, ting. This is my opportunity to get up here and fuck this nigga life up. Oh, Malia Hohami. Aaliyah Hohami, known for the shit she doing. And when you find her out, bitch, don't do what you did to everybody else. Don't come live apologizing tonight because I don't want to hear it. That bitch gonna backfire you real soon. Because these are documents and shit that you about to get coming towards you. That bitch is not going to stand up and assist you when they hit, when they hit your pockets. She ain't gonna help you. Y'all bitches don't understand loyalty for bullshit. I see that today. Just like I wore upside down, I'm warning you. The bullshit go backfire quickly. And I'm going to see how you feel then when you ain't got nobody around you. Because they're coming. It's definitely motherfucking coming. See, a lot of people don't never like, they don't like what I say, karma keep a cut throat. See, I used to be all crazy and shit and want to stick crazy standards for me and shit. Like, let me sit down and think. Because, see, that's what you, that's what you, when you accumulate, when you're around a bunch of motherfuckers who got opinion. And, you know, opinions just like assholes. Everybody got one and shit come out of it, right? People try to tell you shit about what you got going on. That's why I ain't never been a woman to get nowhere in public and discuss my personal business, my personal relations. You already know that's an alley cat bitch. That's what my grandma used to call I'm an alley cat bitch. You so alley, you don't even know how to shit the fuck up. Wait one minute, you guys. Hold on. My bad, y'all. Okay. Let me tell you something. I did want to have this conversation because people always say, no, did you don't like black women? She always got some son. No, I don't like black whores. I don't like messy bitches. I got a lot of black women I communicate with. I build. We vibe. I'm cool. I got a lot of friends. I got a lot of friends. What I can really use that word with a lot of my sisters, friends. But whores, slut buckets, followers. Cause see, if it's so easy for you to jump shit like that noble and fuck with somebody, bitch, that's the same thing you would do to everybody. You have no loyalty, you are illegal. If it, it and y'all just followers, you don't know, went from talking shit to doing your own content, to going back to talking shit, to now you want to follow Cynthia G. Then you was over there in the powers, your goddamn um, that was the person you looked up to it. Bitch, get yourself together. It's like you trying to find yourself in an image of somebody else. And I've never seen a crazy dumbfounded bitch make a 30 second video. What the fuck? Let me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I be trying not to laugh at these hoes, but I ain't got no choice but to. A man can't tell a woman how to be a man. I mean, a man can't, I mean, a man, a woman can't tell a man how to be a man. And a man can't tell a woman how to be a woman. That's what we need to understand when in relationships. If you got to tell a motherfucker, you don't need to be with him no way. Because that was a bad choice. It should have already been that when you got whooped. 
Now, the reason why I said women have turned marriage into prostitute, prostitution, I'm going to tell you why I say that. Back in the day, marriage was arranged according to what both of you had. What your families had, which I can trade off, whatever, what type of royalty you had. Now, marriage is based on just what the man got. Why they just come with simplicity. Because that, that's what they be doing. I'm going to give you a little ass, and I want you to make sure I got everything I need. That ain't nothing but prostitution by country. That ain't marriage. That ain't no relationship. That's prostitution by country. A lot of people might get mad. Marriage ain't nothing but prostitution. Because if you ain't married somebody because you love them and want to spend the rest of your life with them, baby, Y'all have everything y'all need. You ain't doing nothing but send the pussy. Or he said the dick. Which one is? I was just hoping to argument, Lee. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a girl, Jasmine said. Prostitution and slavery is the two oldest things in the world that exist. But we wouldn't have a goddamn trick without a hope. Because all hoes ain't got no pimps. I want y'all to quit thinking that. That's what prostitution is. All hoes ain't got nobody overseeing them and their money. So we wouldn't have a trick without a hoe. Because they weren't sending ass and the tricks didn't have nowhere to buy it from. They'll go back home to their wives or whatever they got going on and live a happy life. Which clearly tells me some of these women, they put on images. But if we really did their old background checks on these so-called women who want marriage and the niggas and that's it, that mammy Andy, and I'm just laughing at this bitch, but you got shit on your floor. Tires in your in your panties. Your face look like a frog. You should have been grateful anybody was choosing you. But you what? And the color man of dusty, I just be laughing. One of them dusties is what helped you. That was your call. See, one thing I know about people, when you get on their ass and you really got to realize who they is, they get mad. They get mad. See, that's one of the 48 laws of power that I learned to follow. Never I shine massive. Them some massive bed with your hoes over there. Never I shine the massive. Let the master always think he running shit. But in the back of your head the whole time, you gonna handle your business and you ready to shine the star. I ain't gonna. I ain't trying to sign master them over there on the page. I ain't trying to sign master them. Because when I do that, they won't reveal themselves. None of them hoes revealing themselves. Funny too. Let's talk about religion and women. Let's talk about religion and women. We already know a lot of the men that's religious. They chauvinistic as hell. We know that. Let's talk about the women in religion. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> my God, my God. In the name of Allah. And they're the biggest hoes in the goddamn congregations. Just look at them two bitches over there. <coughs> <coughs> Noble and Aaliyah. They talk a good game. If you didn't pay attention to them, you would think that they were just good old girls who go to church. But one whole been the church a bit. She she's in uh, the temples, or is she in the jig? What, what what is she a part of? They gave up ass and had eight marital contracts. <laughs> the other one, I ain't never been married, but she might as well have been married to that weak ass game she pushing because she a weak bitch. And she filed for weak ass shit. But she's a Christian. Now let's look at the Muslim and Christian over there. Them the type of hoes my grandmama told me sitting in church. 
gold digging bitches. The mother's board bitches. Trying to get close to Paso. Trying to get close to Paso. So since Noble can't get close to a pastor, because that's a female, she got close to Dale, right? How the hell you at church? There's one thing to be on YouTube. And your shit all around YouTube about your ass and what you were doing. But it's another thing with your ass all over the church. You always talk about you got so much respect for your pastor. You just love your pastor. And ain't nobody gonna talk about your pastor. But bitch, you degrade your pastor by being a whore in her church. You ain't got no respect for your pastor. When you got rumors and scandal distracting her from being able to teach or preach the word. Let that marinate for a minute, bitches. Let that marinate. You over here screaming Allah, and you keep more motherfucking dicks in your mouth and microphones in your hand, but you singing about Allah. Let that marinate for a minute for the fake Muslim. Muslim. Yes, bitches. Mm. Bitch, I've been thrown out every goddamn part of the nation. It's all she can be thrown out of. They toss that bitch out there with the rest of the slop. See, when we got certain women, let me just live with their prime examples. When you see bitches like that, men run. Then this bitch will start shit with you, talk shit, make a thousand videos, they want to call the police. They're just like the little motherfucker who cried wolf. He kept up shit, kept on lying, kept calling these folks, kept up. And then all out the blue, his ass just got ate up. That's what she do. She cried wolf all the time, but the bitch really the wolf herself. In disguise. She like the wolf on Little Red Robin Hood. Cover herself up and slide around and keep up shit. No, these bitches need to learn how to quit singing on the motherfucking microphones and dangling balls like they got them some type of instruments and mind their business and do what they supposed to be doing. That's what they need to be doing. I challenge you hoes. What you got to bring to the table? Let's have a conversation about that. Let's get a panel of women up here and let's talk about your accomplishments. Some of you bitches ain't smarter than a preschool. Some of you hoes ain't washing your drawers. Some of you hoes 800 motherfucking pounds. Some of you bitches don't even know how to be a woman we need be. Y'all talk that shit about 90. But I'm all woman. I'm going to tell you why. Because ain't a motherfucking thing fake about me. I ain't shit fake about me. I don't act like that. I ain't going to get in the cut like most of y'all hoes that play Christian. Yes, Jesus. Yes, baby, I love you, Jesus. Then when he get home, I'm about to chop his motherfucking head off. I ride the dick like I'm at a goddamn rodeo. Pussy get lost in, in my motherfucker. I mean, dick get lost in my ass like a raindrop lost in the motherfucking storm. Hell no. Ain't no man gonna deal with no shit like that. These bitches be having secrets. Quit making it seem like me and Jay walking out on y'all. They ain't just walking out. Something wrong with some of y'all bitches out here. Yes, I'm calling you a bitch because if you act like a dog, then that's what the fuck I'm going to reference you as. And you roof roof bitches over there ain't been doing nothing but barking all over YouTube and ain't got nothing but a fucked up ass reputation and then now one of you hoes got no man. Now I see why. I see why. Don't nobody want to deal with that. Damn right, nothing got them out. I sure do. But I bet you this, my man ain't nowhere in my mouth coming out and they got down just because I feel like raising hell. 
If I'm gonna say something, I'm gonna motherfucking say something not only to uplift him but show him his stupidity. I ain't gonna leave him in it. If he doing something stupid, hold up, baby. Don't go that way. That job right there. You know what I mean? I'm gonna wake him up on that. That job right there. What's up? I ain't gonna tell my man Jay go get no motherfucking job because I need no money and I'm out of blind bonds and my Brazilian ain't fixed. And I need to fix my motherfucking nails. I actually eliminated a lot of my issues because I grow my own hair. I grew my own nails. I don't like them chick chicks touching me any motherfucking way. I ain't trying to go get my shit blowed out because they still put perm in the motherfucking conditioner. And you bitches think your shit still natural. I don't want that type of shit. So my the, what I'm looking for in a man is somebody who's going to love me. Be there by me when I'm sick. Make sure they hold my hand when I need them. That's why my relationship works. I understand compromising sometimes is necessary. That's like me telling my man to go pick motherfucking cotton and get 25 cents a day and I don't give a fuck. That's what you need. Go back to slavery. Some of these goddamn jobs ain't even worth the man clocking into. Ask your man what his goddamn ideas is sometimes. Baby, what would you do if I helped you get a business? How would you, what, what can we build together? Not telling him to go take out no motherfucking trash for two or three dollars an hour, and bitch, when he get that with the check, it still ain't enough. What the fuck this is? Nigga, the red nine thick. My nails eight fifty. My Brazilian three thousand. You broke bum ass, weak ass hoes. Come up out the material and get some goddamn structure. I didn't say structure. I said structure. Be discreet about your motherfucking structure, bitch, and your man will be all right. When did we forget as black women that behind every good black man is a black woman standing on her team? How can you get tired of supporting who you love or being that for who you love? This 2021. And I don't want y'all laws ain't changed. So it's real difficult just when a man get up and get enough nerve to even go find a job or do what he need to do. And because of the color of his skin, as soon as he walk in the motherfucking door, fuck that. As soon as they see the application and black or African-American is checked, they check their ass right on off the fucking list. I was a manager at Subway. I was a general manager 13 years at Waffle House. You know how many times I've seen them motherfuckers just ball a black man's application up and throw it in the trash? Shut my fucking head. And these crackers will make comments. And niggas too. You got coons in that motherfucker. Don't hide him, boss. Don't, don't hide that nigga, boss. He look like he done robbed the bank. Don't have that nigga boss. He look like he gonna be stealing. It be the main motherfuckers sitting in the cut keeping up bullshit. This some Django shit our brothers going through today. Django, that motherfucker Samuel just said, he ain't here for that boss. He want that, that woman. White man was sleep. Django had that motherfucker sleeping and he ain't getting no double guy. To good old coon and ass, sound boy and ass, Sammy Jackson. Came right on in and make you gonna let this nigga sleep on our good white sheets, but you know what part I like about that? Massa told him, ain't you a nigga that sleep on my good white sheets? Now do what the fuck I say. He reminded him he was a nigga too. No matter how big he got. <laughs> You're just a number. So I asked myself. Why are we separated? We need to have some cook-offs. We need to do some shit live and see what women really doing in their background. That shit'll probably scare you. And then half of them like same motherfuckers on here push and swirl and then fuck the black man. Let's take a tour around people's homes and let's see how they live. Cut your cameras on and let's look all through your house. Let's see what type of shit you like, y'all. High-end bitches with this nice shit attitude, and you bitches probably sleeping on some value village furniture. Let's see. These homes, somebody got these big houses in Sterling Heights. 
But when you turn the camera on, that bitch live in a dog house in our mama backyard. Fuck that shit. I'm sick of the fuckery. I'm sick of the fuckery. This is what I laugh at. Shit don't make no sense to me. Some of these women, I wish we could see how they live, but they ain't gonna wanna do that. You know real women, we just move away from the shit. We had all kind of problems with motherfuckers on here. I got a bunch of my sisters that been through this bullshit. Get away. So I never tried me, I ain't give a fuck on sap ass, weak ass, puss ass nigga. I don't give a fuck about that bitch ass nigga. I came over here and talked on my own motherfucking couch. I brought my shit over here. I ain't over there still trying to fit in and following. All up in the goddamn DM. Fucking with a broke bomb ass lame man in. A motherfucker who presented himself to be absolutely nothing. Why would I waste my time with that? You know women who got standards and stand on their ten because they don't waste their time with the fuckery. It's a lot of handsome brothers on YouTube. They air well. Our brothers is what well, look. I don't know what y'all be looking at anyway with that swirling and shit. Cause the brothers is fine out this motherfucker muscles. Six packs. If you look it hard enough, they looking damn good. But get what? My ass ain't for sale on YouTube. I didn't come on here for that. My ass ain't for sale. It ain't even nobody's deal. Pussy popping all over the goddamn screen. But I'm a Hebrew Israelite. And I love son letter. He's my husband. You goddamn demon black son. You ain't shit black son. You're just a dusty like Cynthia G said. Yes, bitches. Yes. Sit on the honorable. Elijah Muhammad, Allah God is going, bitch, which one is it? Is Allah God, are you Christian or are you goddamn Muslim? Hmm. But they say y'all run together. That would they, <laughs> I don't know, y'all. They say Allah and God. Hold up. That's what's funny to me about you Muslims. You say the word Allah means God. Well, how many gods you got? Because y'all say God, boy, you say Allah. Explain. Explain. That's what Medea said. Explain. Because I wasn't saying it. That's how you know the fake motherfuckers. Y'all know the real Muslims or Muslims, whatever they want to call these. Y'all know they got so many ways to say some shit. <laughs> but you better believe they said the name of Allah. Go over there and talk to Club Isis. Is it? In the name of Allah, the mother, they ain't saying no God and shit. They ain't playing so. They dead ass serious. See, they be talking about mother, ain't nobody living by that Bible. If you really live by Bible, you'll be doing what the Bible say. Well, look at no goddamn foreigners. Mm -hmm. They live by them up. They will stone your ass to death. Send child bombers in your shit. Hijack airplanes. They do whatever it takes in the name of motherfucking Allah. Well, what the fuck is wrong with us just doing it in the name of being black? In the name of having a culture and people that we need to follow. What, what the fuck is wrong with that? You ain't gonna get them Chinese women to be talking about they man. You ain't gonna be getting them Chinese women to tell you. go over there talking about Kim Chu C, they gonna whoop your ass. Muammar Gaddafi had an entire military of nothing but women. Ages five and up. And you take your motherfucking ass over there saying anything about Muammar, them women coming at your ass. Black women get with they black men and talk shit and wonder why we ain't got no respect. If we don't even respect them, 
What the fuck make you think the government or anybody else gonna respect our me if we get out this motherfucker and tell a nigga he's a pussy? He can't fight. He ain't gonna bust his gun, y'all. I ain't worried about him. Y'all motherfuckers is crazy. Take your ass over there to Japan. Go to Korea over there with Kim. You see his motherfucking sister? That goddamn Korea, she read the blue. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all think this shit is sweet too. <laughs> you go in the nail shop, you can't sit by on junk food too long. Cause Kim Sue coming and got down post up by your motherfucking head. Bitch, she don't want to see what's going on with your nails. They the technicians. She watch her man and they fucking money. <laughs> Their business. And we ain't even gonna speak motherfucking English never. Don't know you I can't go I can't talk on your own. That's all you motherfucker here. Take a fuck a talk on That's all you hear these motherfuckers say. You ain't gonna hear what the fuck they say for real. And then they're calling you a, a nigga. Take a oh you shut a couple of guy on Lock the door. This bitch didn't pay me my twenty dollars. They don't give a damn about that shit. Black women say they'll let they men get fucked up and ain't gonna do nothing. Chinese women, Korean women, all them folk, take your ass over there fucking with they men. They're gonna tear your ass up and they're gonna go to jail for it. They don't give a damn. Look at these women down here now, the Mexicans. They'll take their ass and they'll steal the whole goddamn Walmart. Go to jail for they folk. Get with her and down there with that chick. Your motherfucking women is crazy. But get where he got the check from from all the shit they stole in the last Walmart. See, they stick together by any means necessary. They stick together by any means necessary. We we don't do that. When the lynch has took over. When the lynch has took the fuck over. Separate the man from the woman and she'll be the beast. Not only is she going to downgrade her man, but she going to be the little boy child. And be the little girl either to be a bad witch or the little boy going to be a dog. Because that's what they trying y'all to do. Some of us skated away from the fucker. Some of us know better. You got motherfuckers like, we the lynch ain't real. We the lynch ain't real. Yes, it is because they talked to the two assistants. It's real. It's motherfucking real. They know what they were doing. And this shit worked. What's sad? At first, we had our sisters to stand by us. Now, these bitches done been willing to so much that they push and swirl. I hurt my goddamn feet. I'm disappointed. I just knew I was going to have black power sisters just like Asada Shakur and Afina Shakur and Pam Africa and all of the well, all my folk who were about that life and we were ready to die for this shit. Now you bowing down into the fucking white man. Kill the bullshit. And y'all saying the men ain't shit? No disrespect. When the brothers get Becky, it's for a purpose. They over there trying to lay up. It's just ass. But nine times out of ten, Becky don't lay. You bitches is big enough to goddamn white man. Like this motherfucker, the only person on earth. Where the fuck we as cultural women do that at? Every other man better than our own men, and you got black men, that's your sons. Black men, that's your brothers. Black men, that's fathers and uncles, and cousins, and people who done did extraordinary shit in your life. And you bitches big up the very motherfucker who tried to tell all of that they're down. Fuck that. Welcome to the show, Brother Yanker. What you want to add to this? Because it, I can't wow. take no more shit. Wow. <laughs>
In the name of our ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the uh, gatekeeper of this uh, program, known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the Mate, Mate, Mate. Angel Snub Nub Seven, I am your soul brother, number one. I want to uh, thank you so much for taking a moment of your time to uh, be with us tonight. It is always an honor. And it brings me uh, great pleasure that you would give us a moment of your time. I don't expect to keep you here long. And I started the uh, live stream early because I heard this talk from our soul sister Nandi 3GP and she oh there goes Sean how you doing there Sean Sean is in the house he found us this is our red shirt talk edition <laughs> thank you so much for being here and uh, Sister Nandy was making so many uh, wonderful, valid, credible points. I'm all right so far, Brother Sean. <clears throat> she was making so many wonderful points. Instead of my usual... Um, I usually play our advertising promotional video. I decided to play uh, her commentary. And if you want to hear the full live stream, you can always subscribe to Sister Nandy 3 gp That's her channel. <clears throat> and many of you, because of an earlier misunderstanding. That's what I call, I call it a misunderstanding. Many of you are already familiar with our sister, Nandy. Again, uh, welcome to uh, Mellowcap and Sean in the chat room and those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast at a later time. Before I give my commentary on this topic, because you cannot put off tomorrow what you can do today because tomorrow is not promised to us. So I would like to say, just in case, <laughs> I know we don't like to hear this, but it's just a reality. Just in case tomorrow is not promised to me, <clears throat> I want to say to all those who have supported us this year and throughout the years, especially during this time of what we call the purge, especially this year, when our channels have been false flagged and terminated, a small channel, it, it is mind boggling to me that Sonetta TV, so large, so big, thousands of followers, listeners, but he took the time out of his day and he thought 
that this little tiny fella, Angel Snub Number Seven, this little tiny ministry, he took the time out of his day and he had us on his mind. That's mind boggling to me. Why, why are they worried? Why is he worried about Angel Snub Number Seven? Why am I on his mind? A nobody. We only get 10 views. We only have 10 subscribers. Why is he thinking about Angel Snub Number Seven? That should tell us a lot. And of course, we've been through this before. Over 100 channels terminated on uh, YouTube. Let me put these comments up real quick. <clears throat> but I want to thank those who support this platform now and throughout the years because look it's amazing look how strong we are with 10 views and 10 subscribers and what make us so strong is because y'all real they have all these thousands of listeners and subscribers and really we just as strong as they are but they're not real the reason why i can keep up and the reason why my words affect so many people is because of you you make me strong because y'all real out there those who support this platform you're real so our 10 subscribers is worth hundreds because we get the same kind of attention. Clearly, we get the same type of attention that they do, and they have thousands of subscribers. That makes you think. This should let us know that what we bring to the platform is quality, it's real, it's honest, it's sincere. And that makes us dangerous to those who represent falsehood, fairy tales, delusion, and lies. You would think that some people would be happy simply because the channels was terminated. They still cry, that's not enough. Of course, you know they want Angel Snubbed Up 7 dead. That's, that's the best thing. But why you want a person with 10 subscribers, I only get 10 views, why you want me dead? <laughs> that's gonna happen soon enough. You don't have to rush. And the sad thing about it is many of these who want me dead probably go before I do. So I would be careful about what I wish for. I want to thank Mello and Sean and so sister Ann and Phil Fox and Z Mad. Of course, the Warriors, the Deacons of Reality. Uh, Brother Talib and uh, Almond Delight, Angela Hines. That's that's our 10 subscribers, right? <laughs> hey, that's our 10 subscribers are real close to. We only have 10 subscribers. <laughs> so I want to thank the warriors of reality. Even though we went through all this, we still win. We win even when we lose. Even to the point that faceless troll Alquan, it, 
it blow his mind. How how could this happen? <laughs> how how could this happen? How how could this happen? It's 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 because we represent reality. We represent the truth. And I didn't even get a chance to really go into my 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 talk <laughs> because, as you know here. Sisters come first, and my sister Courtney is here. How you doing, Sister Courtney? I am me? very well. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect, perfect. I thank you so you much doing? for just inviting me to be a part of this conversation. Um, because, you know, I think that it's very timely, especially considering the recent dissolution of uh, a very top premier couple um megan good and, and pastor devin franklin and um you know i think that it's a worthy conversation to have it's something that more of us black women and black men should be having uh mm -hmm. because one of the main things that seem to be awry with our communities has been uh communication and whether that's communicating certain needs that are that are uh, that are required or preferred, or standards and boundaries in regards to relationships. So I think it's very unsettling that so many decide to kind of throw out an entire demographic of people off of a couple of uh, poor relationships that they've had within yeah. that entire community. So um, I, I shy away from making general statements, but I definitely can share that, yes, I've had, you know, some disappointments, uh, you know, with dating, but I've had a lot of, you know, triumphs and um, being a parent is one of my biggest triumphs. You know, I have two, two, two beautiful children um, to show from a union. So I'm ready to get into it. That's all I want to say. Thank you again. Uh, um, and I'm representing, as you know, members of MX Media Group. Put your X's up. Members from the Globe up. Nation and the Colored Only Community. Yes. <laughs> we put our all X's right. up over here. So um, I'm up. ready to get into it. Thank you. You up. That's it. That's it. Okay. So I, so I just wanted you to speak first because I always let the sisters, you know, you know how I do it. I, the sisters always roll here first. So I will give my little corny commentary. And uh, I guess you can take a little note and follow behind me and say, uh, bring to the uh, occasion what you want to bring. Now, for me, as you know, we've been going back and forth with uh, two, two ladies, two women. I'm going to try to be nice tonight. <laughs> okay. And uh, it just so happened they're black women, okay? But they want to draw me, and there's a lot of folks want to try to draw me into this black gender war crap. I'm not about that. I'm not into the, the, the gender war crap. I have an issue with individuals that just so happen to be black women. I do not have a problem with the sisters because um, my mother was a black woman. May she rest in peace. My sisters is black women. My aunts, everybody around me is soul sisters. Everybody around me is black women. And women have been good to me. I, I have not been lucky in love. <laughs> I have not been lucky in love. But women have been good to me they protected me, they fed me, they have clothed me, they have done many good things for me. So for me, because of a few bad apples romantically or whatever, for me to blame the whole gender of sisters, no, that means, so that means I have a problem with Coretta Scott King, or I have a problem with Harriet Tubman or Sojourner Truth or Fannie Lou Hamer. 
if I have a problem with black women, because these was black women. I have a problem with Malcolm X's wife. You have a problem with your own mother and sisters and aunties and cousins, females. It is unfair and it would be unfair and I try to be a just and fair person. It is unfair and it is unjust for me to, because I become bitter, to strike out against an entire gender, especially when I don't know. It's, it's a lot of sisters with millions of women out here. And for me to put all of them into one category, that's just like it's wrong to put all women and call them ratchets and hood rats when that's not our, that's not, that's a part of our sister's behavior, of course. We know that exists. Yeah, all y'all have some kind of that type of behavior, sisters in around you somewhere. But that's just a little piece of black women. That's not the sisters, period. A little bit about that ratchet appeal, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to tell you, when I was locked up, those so-called ratchet, hood rat women, they was employees where I was locked up. They helped me survive in that place. They was good to me. With their pink hair, their red, white, and blue dreads, or whatever, they helped me survive in that place. It's about getting to know people for who they are. That's just who they are. That's how they roll. We got this thing about trying to make people what we want them to be. Instead of meeting people where they're at. Because where they're at might be a little detrimental. But what they are today, they might not be tomorrow. And our brother Malcolm X is a prime example of that. He changed. Now, of course, he wasn't perfect, but we know Malcolm probably still had a lot of that gangster criminal stuff in him, but he became somebody different. And a lot of us go through these changes for whatever reason. I want to thank my uh, supporters ever so much for keeping us alive, keeping us strong, keeping us well. And we do not want to keep doing detrimental things that we've done in the past. We want to strive to be better. And this is what this should be about, being better. So it's unfair for me to blame the black woman because of some personal bad apples that I know of. Because I don't know the millions of sisters out there. And quite frankly, if the brothers and sisters was as bad as some of these people claim we are, we would be in worse shape than we are right now. If you listen to them, but we're not that. We're not perfect. We make mistakes, trial and error. And we're moving and we're trying to the best of our ability, trying to roll. We must consider a lot of things, especially where we come from. We're not that far from physical slavery. Why, are, why is everybody expecting so much from us when actually we have, we have more time as a slave than we do as so-called free people. So I don't know why we get so upset and don't have an understanding where we come from. We are a little over 100 years from physical slavery, but our ancestors was enslaved for over 300 years, then over 100 years of Jim Crow and the Black Codes. And for us 
to be functioning without really, I mean, just don't really went insane. I think we're doing pretty well and we can do better. But there are those who don't want us to do better because they cannot accept the reality of our situation. You cannot expect everybody to be like you are. We have to reach people from where they are. And that's your problem. You want people to become whatever you feel they should be. That's never going to happen. We are individuals and we are different as a people. So you have to, we have to find something that will help us move forward in our diversity. And the reality is in 2021, our people, the once called Negro, they're not, they don't care, they're not involved. They don't care a lot. They don't care about all that blackly black African stuff. They just don't. You don't want to accept that. Oh, they lost. They don't No, A lot of them know they don't care. They don't care nothing about these things. They just want to live their life. I want food, clothing, and shelter. I want to try to be happy. My ancestors were slaves. They got tortured. I want to be different. I want to progress. I want to move forward. That's what they're interested in. I don't want to be a black supremacist. That's what caused our problem because there was a group of people because of the color of their skin, they felt they was better and anybody that was not their skin color who was their inferior, you should be my slave. You should bow down to me. That's what got us into this problem to begin with. And you want to carry and change it a little bit and you want to think like the people that caused us to be in, in the condition that we're in. How, how does that work? So we've gotten to the point in time where you have bitter black women, they divest from the black man. And so we want to ask them, well, what do you want? Now, for me, you really should jump for joy. When people come out and they say these things, I divest from black men. I, I divest from black women. You should jump for joy. Because these are not the type of people that you would want around you if you're seeking to make yourself strong and to progress forward. Because these are expressions of a weak mind that is not good for you trying to form yourself as a people while you strive to liberate yourself while you strive to do better. These are weak links that you should be happy. They remove themselves from you. It is good that they divest. When you're building a house or a skyscraper or anything like that, most contractors, wink, wink, an honest contractor seeks the best material to build his house, to build his skyscrapers. They find the best concrete, the best steel, the best wood, the best you can find. And they also build on the best ground, the solid ground that they can find. That's what they do. You cannot use, we cannot use these type of mindsets, these type of people, Talk about, I divest. This goes to show you that they are weak. They have no love for themselves or the group they come from. They're not interested in us as a people. So you don't need them anyway. Let them go and do their divesting. 
You don't have to answer their, their crap. Well, in a way you do, because that mindset is toxic. That mindset is poison and they can't keep it to themselves. They're going to offer this poison, this tox this toxic message to young people and they're going to teach it to their own children. But see, like Malcolm, or like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught Malcolm, see, Malcolm said, you don't have to, Elijah Muhammad taught Malcolm, you don't have to go through all that drama. Take your clean glass and put it next to their dirty glass and let the people choose. See, our problem and what makes us upset with people like this, we don't have a clean glass to offer the people. The only thing we can do is run our mouth because in order to present a clean glass, a clean glass is more than running your mouth and talk. A clean glass is you become a producer. You show that you know what you're doing. And the society that you're building is strong. You got to show them a strong building built on a strong foundation with good material. And even those who are against what you're talking about, they will have no choice because they want to drink clean water too. Clean water requires a lot of work. You got to be a bit you got to be a good filter because a lot of dirty water is running through. And you got to clean it all up. But if you dirty and they're dirty, there's no clean water for the people. So the people look at both of y'all as crazy. And that's what you see right now. You see the people, the, the people, it's millions. It's over 40 million black people in this country. So if there's 40 million black people or soul brothers and sisters in this country, you, you think that this genre where we at, you should be getting millions of views, but you don't. Why is that? They're not interested. They're not interested in this stuff. But if they saw people and you were being successful, not just economically, this is more than a money problem. We need money, of course. This is more than a money problem. This is an honesty problem, integrity problem. Do you really love me problem? People know when you love them and when you don't. You want to take somebody on a ride. We've been getting scammed and conned for years and years and the people's sick of it. And those of us who are coming up, that's real. We don't get an opportunity. We don't get a chance because all these scam artists, all these uh, 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 parasites that can smile and deceive and trick, they made it tough for the real. But we should be happy that these type of people divest. That's good. Because you cannot build nothing strong with weak or inferior material. And that's how I view them. I'm not going to sit around and make videos 24 hours a day because I'm going to divest. I don't care. You do, you're doing everybody a favor. Take your divesting ass. You're doing every black man a favor. You're doing every sister a favor. Go find you a white woman, a Mexican, an Italian, or some of them might even be messing around with, with, with Lassie or, or Rover. You, these people are freaky anyway. You know how sexually obsessed we are. And that's another thing too. 
It's all about booty. It's all about ding -a -ling. If we spent the, same, the, the amount of time that we're spending because we want some booty, we want some ass, we want some ding -a -ling, the type of time that we're spending in those type of desires, if we spent that on actually solving the problem and liberating ourselves, we would be free overnight. What's the sense of getting all this dingling, having all these children, being happy, and you are under the domination of people who hate your guts? Today, they gave a, a verdict of guilty for manslaughter for this uh, Caucasian lady. Uh, what's her name? Some Potter lady, Karen Potter. I don't know what her name is, but she shot uh, this young man. And yeah. she's guilty Kim of Kimberly Potter. Kimberly Potter. Yeah, Kimberly Potter. Okay. And so we're happy over that. How many young men or old men or women and children have been murdered and nobody paid a price for nothing? So what is so what is the point? What you jumping, what kind of victory? What are you jumping for joy for? And the only reason they're doing it is because of the climate. Let a little time go back, go by. They're going to go right back to doing what they was doing, letting these police officers and all these suckers go. Nothing has changed because we don't make any laws. We don't make any policy. We hoping that the people in power, please, please, sir, that ain't right. Please, sir. He sent him to jail. Get the, get the federal government, get the FBI, the attorney general, uh, uh, whatever. We always begging. We always pleading. We're grown men and women, but we acting like children. And that's how we get treated. We get treated like children. That's how they treat us. When we march or whatever, that's not enough. That's just like a child having a temper tantrum. Come here back in. Oh boy, he's having a temper, temper tantrum again. That's all it is. They find out to give give you a little sugar, buy you some toy, give give you something to pacify you, because that's what they do with children. And then you calm your ass down, and then they don't have to worry about you no more. And that's all this is. Nothing but pacification. Nothing has changed. No laws. They haven't changed any laws. They haven't changed how they do things. How many they convict this, this white lady for this? How many brothers and sisters are sitting in jail for little or nothing? So what kind of victory is this? It doesn't change the prison population, which is what over 50% black and Hispanics or whatever. While they sending her to jail, how many black, brown, and Hispanic people going with her when she get on that prison bus? It'll be her, a few white women, and a whole lot of sisters and Hispanic women. That's what you're going to see. They should show that when they send her to prison, put on the prison bus or whatever, and, and let's see if, if what I'm saying is right or wrong. You're going to see her. It might be a couple of white women there, but it'll be a bunch of people of color on the bus with her. Has not changed. And so the only thing on our mind is I'm divesting. Talking about ding -a -ling, having a relationship. Who gives a damn about a slave relationship? Who gives a damn about people don't have no power, your relationship? And your nothing ass children. That's right, I said your nothing ass children that serve no purpose. All these babies you spitting out gonna serve the oppressor more than you. And there's nothing that you can do. You can teach them black power 24 hours a day. And they will still end up gay, lesbian, caught up in the criminal system. And all kinds of stuff out here, all kinds of traps waiting for them. 
They serve you no purpose except for vanity. I'm having babies because of my bloodline. I want my bloodline to go into the future. What? Your bloodline ain't worth. Woo, make me want to cuss up in this bad boy. Your blood. What is your bloodline worth? Your bloodline. Nobody caring about your bloodline. Matter of fact, after a certain period of time, your family won't give a damn about you. You will be forgotten. Nobody caring about you and your bloodline. Nobody think about my grandfather. Let me tell you about bloodline. I don't hear nobody talk about my grandfather. My grandfather died in 19, what, 1980 something or, or 70, late 70s or something like that. See, I don't even remember when he died. I know he died before my grandmother. My grandmother died in, in the 90s and he died like 10 years before she did so. It might have been the early 80s or late 70s. My grandfather died. Nobody talk about my grandfather. They don't go to my grandmother's grave. All that's vanity, all that's showboating. Nobody give a damn. Even somebody like Michael Jackson. He would be forgotten if the right people come into power. They're not going to give a damn about Michael Jackson and his bloodline. Don't give a damn about caring about that stuff. And nature only cares about the survival of a species. Your bloodline, that's your vanity. Nature don't give a damn about individual, your blood. Matter of fact, if you don't mix your blood with somebody else, like those royal people used to practice incest, then you're going to have some deform, deformed children, messed up blood. So I don't know, you, you're tripping off the wrong thing. And all of it don't mean nothing as long as you are dominated and living with another man whose blood is superior to yours. <laughs> Ain't no white man superior to, to me. They, they, hate to, they hate to use that word white supremacy. They hate to use the word white supremacy, but the problem here is until you can show that you equal or superior to them, you are inferior, whether you like it or not. Your condition tells us that you are an inferior. So it makes no difference what you don't like. They ain't superior to me. Well, then, if that's the case, then you go and, and run a red light. You get caught with an unregistered handgun. You break their law. And let's see what happened to you. Let's see you leave the country on a plane without a passport. Since, since you don't have to obey what they're talking about and, and you, you are on the same level with them. Now, they don't have to worry. They don't go. They don't ask you to do nothing. Do they? They're not required to ask you, can I go over here? Can I have this? Can I have that? We're delusional. We live in this fantasy world. If I'm able to say that, I can back it up. Now, so these people that's divesting or whatever, they're doing the people a favor. Go away. Go, go divest, invest in somebody else. That's cool. I applaud them. I applaud them. Go away. Because that type of mindset that type of attitude among those who want to try to build a strong people, they weaken the foundation. They are more detrimental than beneficial. Now I want to say, make these two points, and some men 
may not like what I have to say, but I'm going to say it because I've said it many times before. One of the things that caused this problem is that the brothers began to have the mindset of the oppressor. Now prior, now prior to integration, the black man and black woman, the soul sisters and brothers, well, I guess they didn't have a choice, but they were together. And the soul sister and the soul brother understood we are all we got. And so that's how they roll. We are all we got. They know they can't trust white folks. We are all we got. Now, even going back in time, you're always going to have sellouts. You're always going to have those who just looking out for themselves. That, that was going on then and it's going on now. You're not going to, you got folks that's, don't care nothing about no people. They out for themselves. You know, I, I want my car. I don't give a damn if them Negroes never get a car. I, I want to drive a car. You always gonna have people that selfish individuals, they looking out for themselves. But as a whole, during that time, we understood we all we got. Now the problem is once the brothers got a little freedom, and they also was influenced by the Bible and their only, mm, their only example of manhood was the oppressor. And he saw how the oppressor treat his woman and the brothers began to treat the sisters the way the white man treat his woman. That's where we start messing up. We end this together. We're equal. This is an equal fight. But once the black man, and see, in this society, men are always favorite over women in this society and around the world. Men are favorite. That's just how it is. Patriarchal society. So they always favorite, contrary to popular belief, they always favorite the mandingo, the the, the black man over the, the sister. She was just a breeder. But this black man, they always favored him. He was stronger. And of course, they liked his sexual prowess. And we still talk about that. We can have these conversations and somebody always got to bring up a penis and a vagina. We're, 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 we're sexualized. Going all the way back to slavery. Breeders, that's all we are. I got 10 children. I got 12 children. That's the only way these men can feel like a man. How many women they can get pregnant, how many children they can have, because they have no other accomplishments. You can't go outside and see their power lines, the roads that they build, the skyscrapers the nuclear power plants, the space stations, they have nothing. They have nothing to show except pornography. There the brother with his big dangling, look, look at me, you know, manhood. That's all you got. Your intelligence means little because your intelligence has not produced nothing of substance. Jay-Z is a good rapper. But Jay-Z don't produce nothing. What can rap do for us? Nothing. It's nothing but entertainment. It does nothing for society. It does, it don't, does nothing for people. The black man is powerless. And so that's one of the problems that began was this black man, this brother, you start separating yourself and we see this in history where a lot of the brothers start off with nothing. And then when they become successful, they start gravitating toward the white woman 
because the white woman is valuable and it gives them a sense of belonging and being accepted by the dominant society. I'm not saying anything that's that's uh, new. We all we all know this. We want to take some of the heat off the brothers. I'm not taking the heat off the brothers. I understand and I, I know what happened. I'm not taking the heat off the brothers. I'm not taking the heat off the brothers because out of your mouth, you say that you are the protector. You are the provider. You are the leader. Now, if we did not make this claim, hey, nothing I can say. But these men are telling us they are the leaders, they are the head of household, they are the providers and are the protectors. The problem is they have failed in that. And they do not want us to remind them, you are a failure, you are a loser. You do not provide, you do not protect, your leadership is incompetent. That's the reality of it. But instead of looking at yourself, how can I be better? They want to act like a baby. Oh, you are Uncle Dub. <laughs> you are Shambo. <laughs> That's how they. That's how they act on YouTube. That's how they act on YouTube. You gonna get angry at me or somebody to tell you that you're not living up to what you said. Okay, if you're a protector, show me who you protect. If you're provider, show me what you provide. If you're a leader, show us where your leadership has led us to. <clears throat> the reality is these women that divest and these women who ratchets and all this stuff that y'all that the men complain about, you're not wearing your natural hair and all this stuff that you complain about. At the root of it, of the problem, is the fact that she does not have a man to lead, to provide, to produce. So she's loose. She's going wherever she can go. I'm a country boy. Come from the country. Some of y'all are familiar with chickens and roosters. Or if you look at nature itself, those males don't let their hens, their females just do anything they want to and just roam around or whatever. They don't do that. They keep their family in check. That's what they do. So the male rooster don't have to worry about the hen doing this and that because he Soon as she cross the line, hey, bring her back. But you can't do that if you don't have any power. And the black man in this country, you don't have any power. So since you don't have no power, why the hell should she listen to you or me? You don't have no power. Negro, you ain't tell me what to do. We even tell that to other black folks trying to give us order. You can't tell me what to do because you know the white man is the one in charge. I'm going to go, I'm going to see what uh, 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 boss, boss so-and-so going to say about it because they know that you don't have any power. Because they don't have any power. And so you have men that get angry at us here on Reality's Tip on Earth 
They get angry at us because we've come up with a vision and a plan to give us power. So, so when we make laws and policy, we can enforce and we can back it up. We provide for our children. We protect our women, children, and even our dog Scruffy. We have power. But somebody that has no authority, has no power, you're not going to get any respect from nobody. Not even from yourself. You're not going to get any respect. Here we are. We are in an unusual circumstance. It is wise that we come up out of these role models or these roles, traditional roles that we think men and women should have. We need to come up out of that in order for us to survive, in order for us to progress, in order for us to liberate ourselves. Look at nature. You got the male and female bird come together. And the male builds the nest or the male and the female build the nest. She laid the eggs. Somebody has to stay with the eggs. Sometimes they share the duties. Sometimes the male will sit on the eggs. And the female goes out and she finds food for the male because he has to stay and lay on the egg. Such as in the case of penguins. Penguins do that. The male sits on the egg sometimes. Female go out and get the food. and so forth. They share in the duties. Our traditional roles in 2021, because of our circumstances, because of our circumstances, you can't operate that way, these traditional roles. If I'm married, and I make $40,000 a year, and my wife makes $300,000 a year, I have no problem. She's the breadwinner. She's taking care of business. I'm going to support her because when it's all said and done, the $340,000 come to our house, to our children, to our family. I do not feel less than a man. Next thing you know, I win the lottery, me and some dollars, way more than my wife. Nothing changes. That million dollars and the 340,000 come to the family, come to our children, come to my, help our cousins and our grandfathers and, and our, our, our people. We're stuck in these role, these roles that no longer work for us. It should be whatever job needs to be done, whoever can do it best, they do it. If the sister can go out and be the breadwinner, I can take care of our children. I can stay home and take care of the children. What's wrong with that? I don't feel like a man. Why you don't? Why you don't feel like a man? Because the Bible say you're not a man? Because the Quran say you're not a man. You, we're, we're losing good women. We're losing good men because of this foolishness that we got ourselves trapped up in. These, these roles. Nowadays, it takes the male and the female to make a decent living to support children. Now, of course, there are things because a man is stronger or whatever he should do. But whoever can just, just take care of business. Well, I, I don't do that. That's, that's woman's work. 
uh, that, that's male work. Work is work. There's, there's no gender to no, to no uh, 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 work. When you go to these companies, like if you go to Amazon, they don't chip off of you, are you a male or female? They only, only thing they want, concern is, can you do the work? Can you lift these boxes? Can you put all this stuff on this truck? Can you drive this truck? There ain't nobody tripping off of that stuff. Work is work. As long as the job get done. We're too busy. That's that's what that's man work. That's women work. Stupid stuff. And the bottom line, it doesn't make any difference because as long as you are inferior, as long as you are under the uh, domination of another people, all your work and everything that you do benefit the people that's, that's in power because you are going to pay them taxes and they control all the resources. So all this crap about, I'm a man. So how do you feel like a man? You don't control no resources. You can't even bring money into the house. Now, I understand that a lot of these jobs are un underpaid, labor, blah, blah, blah. I understand that. But if, if, if you're a man and you got children to feed, you got a man got to do what he got to do. You didn't have no problem laying up and getting the pleasure to make those babies. Now those babies need food, clothing, and shelter. That's your responsibility, Mr. Man. If the only thing you could do is minimum wage, I guess that's what you'll be doing. You're spoiled. These men are spoiled. You have women that sit around and, and, and take care of their, their sons and their, and, their, and their boyfriends. Oh, I don't want you working at McDonald's. You don't feel like a man. I don't want you working at McDonald's. And then you wonder why you don't have a man. Because you're spoiling them. That's not good. I'm telling you, as a man, I'm telling you, that's not good for you to spoil your sons and your men, your husbands, boyfriend. You're not doing them a favor by letting them sit in your house while you go to work. And they play video games all day. Get your ass off. I don't care what you're doing. You got to do something. Especially when you have children. You got to work. I don't even have children. I washed dishes for two straight years. Cleaning all them plates from all these folks out there, whatever. All these leftover steaks and salads and wiping that up and cleaning the floor, cleaning the grease traps. I clean toilets. Bathtubs. I picked up cans off the street. Instead of going to the army, instead of going to the military, I picked up cans off the street. Aluminum and steel. Paper. Recycled crap. Instead of going to the military. And then, after my incarceration, you know they don't want to hire people that's been incarcerated or whatever. <laughs> I did what I had to do. And the people, where are these trolls coming from? I thought we I thought our channel was terminated. <laughs> Thought our channel was terminated. <laughs> Wait, it's just like it's all these trolls coming to the channel, just like nothing never happened. <laughs> that must be Alquan, because Alquan probably got about 20, 20 different channels. It might just be Alquan. He's he's really upset because we survived. <laughs> they go to the Deacons. Uh, the Deacons, the Deacons is in the uh in the house. 
uh, Twin Pyramid and Soul Brother 85. I love those brothers. Uh, warriors. Powerful, powerful men. And you know the brothers have to be powerful to be here the way I talk about. And I guess that's the reason why some of these uh, black men um, hating women, I guess that's one of the reasons why some of them was attracted to my channel because of how I talk about men. But I'm not talking. Something went wrong. Please try again. I'm not talking. I'm not talking to the brothers because I hate us. I'm talking to the brothers so we can realize and understand what has happened and how we can resolve that so that we can grow and become better. You cannot become better. What is it that they say in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous? The first step to recover is you have to accept the fact that you are a drunk. That's the first step. We are in denial. As men, we are in denial of ourselves. We want to try to put ourselves on the same level as other men, and you can't do that. Even though some of us have millions of dollars and we think we the, we, we think we the sh shizit or whatever, we are far, far behind. And the reason why you have all these black women that's crazy as hell, like Sister Noble and Aaliyah Porkchop and Cynthia G and Karen, the reason why they exist is because they have no man. They've had, the black woman has had no man since she came off the slave plantation. That's the reason why. We're not a people. They said, oh, we're, pe we're not a people. In order for us to become a people, the leader, which is supposed to be the man, the leader that's supposed to be the man is the one to get us together, to unite us and, and get us to become a people. The black man, soul brothers have failed. We're not even a people. We're just a, a bunch of different groups running around doing their fizzy because we have no man. In order for us to move forward, <laughs> in order for us to move forward, we have to have leadership. And the leader is supposed to be, according to y'all, supposed to be the male. It's up, it's up to us to get it together. But the problem is, in your leadership, you have to be equal, you have to be honest, and you have to be fair. You cannot be like your oppressor. But because you act like your oppressor, or you act like some other fool from the past or around the earth, we can't get our sisters on board. We can't get ourselves together. We're going from one slave plantation to another. That's not going to work. See, I will tell you, we offer Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. <laughs> where, where are all these, these uh, trolls coming from? <laughs> uh, I'll let my moderators handle that. I'm almost done with my, I don't know what happened to Sister Courtney. She dropped off. But uh, we offer Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. Do you know, as men, do you know if we could accomplish that? All these women talk about divest, following Cynthia G's nasty rhetoric, and the woman's fear, or even the, the man's fear. If the good brothers, if you got yourself together 
and you took control of a state, everything that they say, it will shut them all down. Because not only are you offering talk, but you got substance behind your talk. Because you can talk, but you can also say, look at all this I control. We, the black man, the soul brothers, we took control of all a whole state. We make the laws. We control the Mississippi River. We make the laws and the, and the guidelines behind the nuclear power plants and the gas companies and electric companies. We control all this, all this here. And we're gonna ex expand our territory. What can Cynthia G say? Because a Dusty can't do that, can't accomplish that. It takes men. It takes men to implement and produce and make the Mississippi campaign real. And I was talking, I was talking with our brother Maurice Muhammad. Shout out to Maurice Muhammad, Mississippi campaign, Mississippi initiative, the initiative, and all those who are working with him. We was talking this morning, and uh, he basically said, they are afraid to do big things. You don't have no, uh, you don't have no confidence in yourself. In order to make the Mississippi campaign real, you have to unite with your brother. You have to learn how to love your brother. You have to love and unite with your brother despite your differences and your personal wants and your needs, you have to look out for what is in the best interest of a people. The reason why they reject the Mississippi campaign is because most of these folks don't give a damn about black people. They want you to be like them. They have, they want you to be a Christian. They want you to be a Muslim. They want you to be a Hebrew. They want you to be an African, whatever it is on their mind. That's what they want all of us to be. And it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. We are diverse. You have to work with the people where they come from in our diversity. Stop trying to change the people. Learn how to work with the people. And if you work with the people and they don't feel like you're trying to be a damn slave master, maybe in your wisdom, you can guide them to the place where you think they should be. But you're not wise. You just like the slave master. You want to take out your whip. You're Uncle Tom. You're a Sambo. You're a bed wench. You're a mammy. Slave masters, you have the same mindset as the oppressor. Even use the even use the slave master's own words. The same words the racists use. You said it. You use the words the same way that the oppressor do. That's why I keep telling you these are nothing but Europeans, chocolate covered Europeans, dark Europeans. That's what I said. I'm almost, almost done with my, well, actually I am, I'm done with, with our talk. I've said what needs to be said. We need to make an adjustment. Let me see, okay, this person here, I wish he would stop talking about the Mississippi campaign. He is not, that's, that's got to be Alquan. Does it really take three years? Yeah, it, it take it take more than that. You're not helping. I mean, why is these people concerned about the Mississippi campaign? They're not doing nothing to, to, to help nobody do nothing. Block your happy ass. You ain't gonna come back. You don't have to make you a, a new uh make you a new uh email. Why why is why are people 
so concerned about the Mississippi campaign and they have not helped do nothing. They're not even doing what they claim need to be done. They're not even doing that either. Show us your success. Show us your accomplishment. They don't like the Mississippi campaign because it's real, it's valid, it is not perfect. But that's where you come in. You help make it better. They come to help destroy and to try to make mockery. But common sense tell you that's the way to go. To get power for the people, like the Black Panthers used to always say. Power for the people. And the people need to be involved so when we accomplish this great feat, it's not a black man thing. It's not a black woman thing. It's not a black children thing. It's not a nation of Islam thing or a Hebrew thing or a Pan-African thing. It's we as a people done this because the people actually done this. That's why it's important to get the people involved. Because we want we don't want to say, well, Angel snuffing up. Uh, no, no, we did this. All of you participated and made this possible. We do not mention my name. Look what we as a people, we come together and united. Look what we accomplished. And it turned out much easier easier than you thought it would be. Fear is a hellified thing. Having no confidence, self-esteem in yourself. Have you ever taken control of a state? We've had towns. We had small cities that we control or we created. We've never had a whole state. So how can you laugh and make mockery about something you never done? Matter of fact, I challenge you, do it. Since it's nothing, why don't you do it? Let's see you do it. No, you still wanna keep doing the same rinky dink, tiddly wink, baby step stuff that slaves done. Here we, look, I'm gonna say this, we're gonna get out of here. I was hoping Sister uh, Omega could come back. Here we are, and, and we should be embarrassed. Here we are in 2021, and we can't accomplish no more than people that came fresh off the slave plantation. Do your history. See how our people, our ancestors, see how they rock and roll. And they came, they came straight off the, off the plantation. Didn't know how to read, didn't know how to write, didn't know how to. And look how they took began to take care of business. Here you are, here we are. In 2021, you should be shamed. We should be shamed. And we can't progress and we can't do no better than slaves. You have more money, you have more education, you have less obstacles, everything is in your favor. The only thing is, is missing is you don't have no faith in yourself, you have no vision, you have no creativity, you have no confidence, you have no proper leadership. And so when you see Cynthia G and all these women with all this nonsense that they spewing, it's because the head of household, you have failed. We have failed as men. But she was shut up and all of them would shut up when you gain power. Women respect strength and power. She don't respect us because we have no power. We have no strength. 
the same place we get our power and strength from, she can go get it too. So what the hell I need you for? You get your power and strength from the white man. Why can't I go get my power and strength from the white man? These ladies here, these ladies here, the only thing they had to do was go to the white man, the same place that the that their producers went to, and they could have got a record deal. They didn't need those men. The only thing they need was those men's talent. But they can go to the white man just like, just like, uh, like those brothers went to. Because that's who's running everything. So why, so, see, you want respect, but you don't want to earn it. You want somebody to treat you like a god. You want somebody to treat you uh, like a king, and, uh, a queen, and a goddess, but you don't want to earn it. You don't want to qualify. You want somebody just to give that to you on face value and you didn't do nothing to earn it. That's not how life is. Brother Phil Fox is back in the house. How you doing, Brother Phil? <laughs> Where are all these? I thought we was terminated. I thought this channel, I thought the, I thought Angel Snow number seven channels is terminated. How? Where do these trolls come from? But that goes to show us. That goes to show us how important and influential we really are. How these people don't know. If they got on board the soul train. And we went to work. Not me by myself. We. Not Angel Snut Number 7. Not Brother Phil Fox, not Soul Brother 85. We get on the soul train. We work together. We could solve our problem almost overnight. And a lot of these losers don't want you to get on the soul train because misery loves company. We had a guest on our platform a few days ago, Brother Lorenzo, and I asked him, you know, how long are you willing to wait for this for this success? Oh, it'll happen when it happened. What, what kind of answer is that? What kind of answer is that? That's not, a, no person, no person in their right mind, that's, that's, that's an unacceptable answer. That's unacceptable. But he accepts that, being a loser. Being a loser is not acceptable. This is how bad we are. We win even when we lose. That's why all the trolls are here. We win even when we lose. That's how bad we are. On this soul train. It's going to take a lot of us to do it and get, get the job done. That, 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 that what kills me. What about the Mississippi campaign? You want to take control of a state. And you want to do it now. Take a lot of work, a lot of people to do that. It's a nationwide effort in order to pull this off. Because you want the people involved. So no matter if you live in Chicago or L.A. or New Orleans or Newark, wherever you live, you want it to be a nationwide effort. So the people can say, look what we done. And you will benefit from what we done. And then you will spread to another state and another state. 
when people see, oh, that's how we do it. Now you know what needs to be done. It's been tried. It's been tested. And you're on your way to glory. Nobody else has nothing. They keep doing the same stuff they was doing in 1930, 1915. Let me put some of these uh, comments up here. Shout out to Tasha Fierce. That's a loser's response, absolutely. Excuse making. Don't want to try nothing new. Don't want to, don't want to, you have a new mindset, a new strategy, do something new. We win even when we lose. We can win because our ancestors already done the real, the real work. They already paved the way. We learn from their mistakes. You're steady making the same mistakes our ancestors done. Still doing the same thing and think and act the way they done. It didn't work. You still want to try to put a square peg in a round hole. It's not going to work. You have to do something different. <laughs> stop blaming, stop blaming Nub Seven for your losership. You ain't a bunch of losers. They hate it when I say that. You're a bunch of losers. Well, show us how you're winning. Show us your accomplishments. The only thing they know how to do is have debates. Uh, they might open up an ice cream stand. Uh, I just bought me bought me some more farmland. They know how to grow some sweet corn or something. What are your real accomplishments? Tell me what you've done or what you're doing that would benefit us greater than taking control of a, a, a whole an entire state. They can't never show. Can't never show. You're selfish, you're arrogant, and you're greedy, and you really don't give a damn about black people. That's the reality of it. Very few give a, a damn about us as a people and the people know that that's why these channels aren't getting millions and millions of views like they should because you know it's, they, they, it's nonsense you love black people but you call black folks coons and sambos and mammies and niggas and all this other stuff I love the black people, though. They're my people. They're, they're Africans. I love my, my African people. I love the Africans. I, I love my people. <laughs> Woo, fake. Fake ass folks. I do not know what happened to Sister Courtney. I was trying to uh, keep rolling. Hopefully she was coming, come back. Cause I did definitely wanted to uh, get her input, and I did invite a few folks to the live stream, but uh, they they didn't show up, which is which is fine. <clears throat> um, I don't think really I'm going to be having a lot of guest on my platform no more um it's just going to be i think it's better just for me to be solo and do do what angel snub nub seven been doing since 2007 i think it's better that way i might have a guest now and then but it's better for us to roll solo the way we've been doing because a lot of folks the reality is a lot of folks just, they're not interested in, in us as a people and wanting us to do better. It's about what they want.
Okay, well, I didn't see this comment here. Okay, we got a person, uh, Deborah Mason. And Deborah says, I'll make a donation if Soul Brother 85 comes on the live and shows himself. Lorenzo was on point. Oh, they, they watched the uh, Lorenzo interview. Well, how about this, uh, Deborah? Why don't you show yourself? Come on. You can show yourself right now. And I'll make a donation to you. How about that? What what point did Lorenzo make that was on point? I just I'm just curious. What is it? What what point is it that Lorenzo was making? And and he he did make some points. We're not saying that Lorenzo didn't make points. Everybody can speak uh, uh, truths. But when it's all said and done, Lorenzo is stuck in the past. Lorenzo is that brother um, we had as a guest earlier. Um, I forgot when it was. I forgot when I had that live stream. It was a few days ago, last week. I forgot when the, when the live stream. I, I'm going to keep it with it. But uh, put in the chat room, what was it that Lorenzo was on point with? Now, mind you, <laughs> I don't think that's good for Lorenzo. <laughs> folks folks forget, forgot about him already. But uh, put in the chat room. And we can talk about it before we get out of here. What was it that Lorenzo was talking about? He was on point. And mind you, if you show your face, I will make a donation to you, uh, Deborah Mason. I want you to come on the live, Deborah Mason, show your face. And I will donate to you. What's your cash app? I guess we won't be hearing from, from Deborah no more. Oh, there go Deborah. Okay. Deborah says, I believe it was Sunday. Yeah, I think it was Sunday. Lorenzo made great points about being able to do or not do the Mississippi campaign. Yes, he did. And Lorenzo can make, make it better. But Lorenzo would rather sit back in the cut and tell us about what's wrong rather than we can do this or that to make it better. And this is the vision, this is the plan to get us some power. What, what point did he make to give us some power? He offered nothing that would give us any kind of power no time soon. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's older. He's older than I am. And he's lost in the past. He want to send me some books from all these old historians and people, whatever. Yeah, all that stuff. What has it done? You got all this knowledge, all these books and DVDs and debates. What has it done for us? All these pretty speeches. We got God. We got the ancestors. What has it done for us? That's my question. It hasn't gotten us nowhere. That's not acceptable no more. That's not acceptable. Yeah, I asked Deborah. I'll make her a donation. Come on the panel. Express yourself. It's not necessary. 
And she still didn't say exactly what did he say, his his point, his points that he was making. But um We lost Sister Omega. She was here. I was trying to, I was hoping that she would uh, come back because I, I wanted to hear her um, opinion about this particular topic. Uh, bitter black women divest from black men. Uh, what, and is that, what do you want? I'm going to say that we're going to, and this is going to be uh, in conclusion here. What do you want? And Sister Nandy actually brought the question up earlier. I played Sister Nandy. Shout out to Sister Nandy, uh, 3GP. Sister Nandy asked the question, what do y'all want? What do you bring to the table? I want Cynthia G and her people make a video what do you want? What do you bring to the table? How come you're not a female Dusty? How come you're not a female Dusty? Are you marriage material or you ain't, you ain't nothing but a high price call girl? What, 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 what are you about? Are you perfect? It's easy to talk about somebody else. What about you? What's your problem? What make you so great? You want to lay around and let some man take care of you. For what? And the only thing you bring to the relationship is some booty, some panties. Just like Sister Nanny said, that sound like prostitution. That sound like prostitution. The relationship that I had with Sister Noble and Aaliyah Porkchop, it sound like prostitution. That's what it sound like because I gave them money and they didn't, really, they didn't give me nothing. They didn't even give me no panties. <laughs> I gotta pay you. Aaliyah said you gotta, I pay for my time. That sounds like prostitution. When you pay, when a man pay, is paying woman for her time like that, that's prostitution. And Sister Noble said, that's a good job to have. That's the oldest, that's the oldest profession is prostitution. What do they want? Sister Nandy told the truth. That's why I played, played her video earlier before my uh, actual live stream is supposed to come on. I wanted people to hear Sister Nandy speak. I want to see what, make, what, what makes them better. What gives them their value? It's easy to talk about somebody, but the thing about it is, if you can dish it out, then you should be able to take it. And that was the problem with uh, Big Mouth Karen. She talked all this stuff and she tried to humiliate the brothers and blah, blah, blah. But when it was her turn to get blasted, <laughs> I'm a woman. Why you don't talk to me? Ain't just stop them hate women. I, I trusted you. If you can dish it out, you should be able to take it. And so the crying began. And all the other loser women. I didn't know he was like that. He attacked poor Karen. Oh, Karen. All that fake ass crying. If Angel Snuffin' Up 7 is a Dusty and you can call people names, then they can call you names right back. 
But when it's all said and done, the black manosphere, the woman's fear, Sister Noble, Aaliyah Porkchop, Cynthia G, nobody is offering no solutions to nothing. Just a bunch of complaining and some childish bantering. I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't like him. I don't like her. That's all it is. It's childish. Solve the problem. You can't solve the problem. You don't have a solution because you don't have the intelligence. So why don't you listen to those who have the intelligence, who have the solution? And I'm telling you, the solution to your problem is right here. Put your ass to work, because what do they say? An idle mind is the devil's workshop. All these people running around here don't have no nothing really to do. Your mind is idle. And the only thing you can think about is some devilish ass crap. Put your ass to work for something that's beneficial. And we can solve this problem. Because when this black man and this, this black woman, this soul brother and soul sister get together and you work together to accomplish something big, you'll fall in love with each other. I guarantee. Like, wow, amazing. And I worked side by side and we did all this together as soul brothers and sisters. Working on this project will bring you the unity that we should have had a long time ago. Working together, being successful together. And even if you lose, you still win because now you got a camaraderie. You'll see the value in one another. And you won't stop until you win. Look how far we got. Let's keep doing this until you win. But I'm telling you, you're gonna win regardless. Even when you lose, you can win. My channel is an example of that. Terminated, slandered, gossip. And look at us, still winning, even when we lose. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> so on that note, thank you everybody. Uh, for listening, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip. If I don't see you until next year, then I wish us all a happy new year. And uh, but I, I expect to see you before the the new year. But uh, again, I thank all my supporters, all ten of my su subscribers, and all ten of my views. I I, I uh, appreciate all of you. We did a hell of a job this year. Woo! The purge. <laughs> the purge. We, we got people uh, talking about having purges. You know, uh, so, you know, we got people calling folks doo doo lady. We got folks, we got people uh, calling people pork child. <laughs> Woo! If only, if only. We could get them to, to, to call to, to Mississippi and implement this Mississippi campaign and let us accomplish something that's real, you know? And um, it'll be all good. Yeah, what a year. Absolutely, what a year. You're welcome, you're welcome. So on that note, let's get out of here. And um, hopefully, uh, next year will be much better than this year. We got ourselves together. Start afresh. Uh, I do not plan on talking about uh, these people anymore to begin the new year. We just want to do our thing like we was doing and keep the train on the tracks. And it makes no difference about other folks. We're going to keep ourselves sane. We're going to keep ourselves on the right path, like the Quran says, and uh, just keep moving. Um, all stories don't have uh, good, happy endings. It is what it is. If for some reason they jump on board the soul train, that's good. We're here. Let's do it. If they don't get on the soul train, that's fine. So 
it makes me no difference. It's up to, to the people what they want to do. So on that note, thank you, Deacons of Reality, Mello, Sean, uh, Deborah, and all those in the chat room. Uh, to the trolls that was bringing, I, I, I would not have blocked you, but they was writing dumb stuff. You know, I mean, why do they have to write dumb stuff? Bring a, a, a civil comment or whatever, and we can discuss it. But they have to be silly and silly, and, you know, troublemakers, dumb stuff. Now, now where yet? I think all those tr all those accounts came from Alquan. He done ran out of accounts. He can't come back no more. Dumbass. It's, it's easy to block channels. It take more time to get make more emails to make more channels. Stupid, stupid stuff. So on that note, as in pardon, I wish us a happy night, peaceful night, if that's possible. And I catch y'all on the flip, all the five thousand. As in, the, as our brother Duncan Ulysses used to always say, as in pardon, I wish us love, peace, and.